Now, Men's Health Awareness Month is observed in the month of June to increase awareness of health issues, ultimately leading to early detection, treatment and improved outcomes. Our focus tonight is on male infertility. When a couple has trouble getting pregnant, the assumption is usually that the problem is the woman. But what if it's the man? Male infertility, the common reaction to this is men do not talk about it. The burden of infertility has been cast on women and this is one of the things that we want to erase. And in order to counteract that, we are providing a couple clinic services. And yet, it is a health issue that cannot be ignored. Statistics on infertility in Kenya show that 30% is due to male factors, 40% is due to female factors, and 30% have a combination of both male and female factors. Men, in general, do not accept that they're infertile, and they do not uh, come to the clinic early. Usually the doors are opened by the woman. With no visible clues, fertility experts say many men were unaware of the problem until they got tested, often surprised by the result. While some male infertility could be treated to restore natural fertility, such as in cases of hormone deficiencies, sperm tube blockages or stopping drugs like androgens, there are other factors that can cause infertility in men. You can have undescended testes because the environment is not good. It could be have behavioral issues where you have hot temperatures around the testes. For example, truck drivers mm -hmm. uh, tend to have a very high levels of infertility, but they still sit at the engine day and night uh, driving a long distance. Okay? So people who work in the pharmacies and so on, they tend to have low sperm count or poor sperm count and infertility. So those are environmental factors. Or people who like very hot baths, uh, men, then of course you hit up uh, the scrotum and the, or its content mm -hmm. and then of course you get low sperm count. All right. There, 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 are many, there are many factors. Acquired, of course, like infective processes, like sexual transmitted infections. You keep on getting that. Whether you're a man or a woman, you are going to have uh, infertility because they, they block the inflammatory process, blocks the delivery systems, which are tubes. Okay. In situations where couples have struggled to start a family, this is the process towards finding a solution. We will investigate both. All right. And we, in both cases, uh, we want to see whether fertility is possible. So we have to go through the science of fertility. All right. It's a part of persuading the man to be a partner. All right. That they understand that there's no pregnancy without a man. Experts encourage couples to walk this journey together. There's one crucial factor that is important that the sperms must be present. The sperms must be present in good quantity. The sperms must be normal. The sperms must be moving around because it is the movement that ends up in fertilization. They seek the egg to fertilize, literally. You can put that in a simpler fashion. Data shows that in 60% of cases, it was due to unexplained poor sperm production. The news that a man has low sperm count or no sperm and is therefore infertile comes as a shock to many. There is a process of cancelling. Information is power. Many people are misinformed. So you inform without hiding. You get frank and say, this is the situation. The situation is not due to any one of us, not you, not me. It happens that you have a poor sperm count. 
cost is a barrier to adequate fertility care for patients. This is not affordable for all Kenyans, we can say that. It's, it's expensive. Uh, if you're charging about half a billion Kenya shillings or 400,000 shillings, and if you have other added factors that you're going to do, like the stupid sperm aspiration, egg donation, because you also offer that, all right, all those things require extra payments. Mm -hmm. So they become difficult. So what treatment options are available for male infertility? Assuming that the woman's reproductive system and functions are intact, then we, uh, I will tell them uh, what options we have. If, for example, the sperm count is reasonable, we can do intrauterine insemination, similar to what you do to cows. Okay? So we deliver sperms into the uterine cavity, uterus, the cavity of the uterus, at a time when she is ovulating. Now, what about then if uh, the sperm count is, is, is too low? All right. Uh, then we know IVF becomes the solution in that case. You pick one sperm and one egg and inject. If this fails, your doctor might suggest that you and your partner consider using sperm from a donor. Other than that, there are many that we do uh, sperm donation, all right? Mm -hmm. They choose the characteristics. The sperms are not sold, all right? We don't buy them. We find uh, young people who can uh, donate and uh, usually intelligent people like university students. Male fertility problems can be treated. That's the happiest moment, even for me as a provider, because the transformation from that market situation of infertility and its stigma, mm. all right, has been defeated. Yeah. Which means that these services, if they were more available, very many people would benefit. World Infertility Awareness Month is celebrated every June to increase awareness regarding numerous infertility issues faced by couples.